Hello, my loves. Welcome back to another video on Starseed Academy. My name is Jenny, and I'm so, so grateful to have you here. Um, I have a couple of videos in mind that I'm wanting to make in a row. And the reason why is my last two energy reports. Make sure that you're signed up for my energetic reports. They go out like every Monday. The last two that I did were so deep, like the concepts were so deep and I could have just kept writing forever and ever so much wanted to come through. And I feel like they're so important that I really want to go a little bit deeper into those. So the first one, if you're on the on the email list, then the first one that I really want to dive into, which will be today's video, is about the mainframe of Gaia. This was such a huge concept. I couldn't possibly fit it all into like it would have been a novel. But I do want to kind of go through um some some really important points that came through. Now, um, for that particular email, I was channeling the Pleiadian Council for Humanity. And I want to talk a little bit about like who they are. And I want to talk more deeply about what is the main frame of Gaia. What does that have to do with our reality? What does that have to do with you and me and and, and how we're living here on the surface? And is is this a simulation or not? And there's there's just so much to unpack, um, and it feels it feels important to do so. But of course, before we jump into the video, um, I just want to remind you to please like this video, share this video, comment. I really appreciate all of your comments. I love your video requests. By the way, I always save them, kind of like screenshot and save those for myself. And I and I have a folder on my phone about like like video request ideas. Um, what else did I want to share with you? Oh, and of course, make sure that you sign up for that, the weekly energy reports, because then you're going to get these before everybody else. These are free. They just go right to your inbox. And I never know. I, I truly never know what's going to come out. Like every Monday, I just sit down and I'm like, okay, like what, what does the collective need to hear about? What's, what's important? What are people questioning? What's on their minds? And it's just so different every time. So this one, this one in particular really blew me away. And, and I just felt kind of one of those, like, like, aha in your mind, like, oh, like what moments. And I just, I just wondered um, how many of my subscribers were, were reading that email and thinking, what the fuck is she talking about? <laughs> like, was it too deep? Was it too much? And I want to make sure that everybody really understands it um, because it felt so important that we do understand. It's this like mind bend, it's reality bending. It's beyond mind bending. It's a reality bending like download about our planet and our reality here. So let's jump into that. Did I say everything that I wanted to say? Yes, sign up for the email list. Um, subscribe here for new videos every week. Mm. Make sure also that you're following me over on Instagram because there's just such unique, different content over there that doesn't make its way over here. So especially in the stories. So get on over to Instagram. I feel like all of these links are probably in the description of this video. I'm sure I have that set up in some way. Okay. And don't forget how much I love your comments. So please feel free, like as you're watching this to kind of like add in your thoughts as well. And sometimes if you wait to the end of the video, they're gone. So feel free to, okay, I, I've, I'm, I've watched up to this part and this is what I'm thinking so far. Like I love reading them. I truly do. Um, I'm going to pop on some glasses because I'm going to actually reference my email. Little known fact about me. I actually need glasses, y'all. Okay. These are not for like show. The reason why I don't wear them, look at this right here, okay? The reflections of, of my light that makes the video clear, like you have to have a light source or these videos are quite grainy. So my light source reflects in my glasses and it's so distracting. I feel like it would be super distracting for you. So let me know, is this super distracting? Uh, for now, I do need them because I need to read something for you, but I would love to be able to wear them, but I don't know if it's a me being paranoid thing or if it's a an actual, yes, that's super distracting and like, look, yeah, okay, it probably is. All right, all right, okay, let's jump in. Um, get yourself a nice warm drink, get cozy. Let's jump into this. Um, and also just a quick reference, I'm going to put all of this, this download in the uh, description of the video as well. Okay, so you should be able to kind of follow along if you want to and see that 
Or if you're on the email list, you can just search up in your email box, mainframe of Gaia, and this email should pop up for you if you've received it already. I don't know if you want to kind of like follow along as we do this, but I want to go deeper into it kind of like section by section. Okay. Because I couldn't like insert into an email everything that was coming through. Like it's so difficult. And in particular, the beginning. Okay. So I saw this vision. Okay. This download started as a vision and it's super hard to describe. And I really tried to find an image. And I also tried to create an image like on um, Discord through AI mid journey. And I could not get it right. Um, Brian is really better at at, like mid journey than me. He's fantastic at it. And he uses that in his business a lot. In fact, he created an entire, this is side note, but Brian created this incredible deck of Oracle cards, all about wizards and like their secrets. It's so good. And it's all done like through mid journey. It was so, so good. Um, but since it's not my speciality, I just wasn't really able to like pull together an image. So let me try to describe for you. So the vision that I saw was, so we have earth in the center of the vision. This is an outer space. Okay. So I've got earth in the center. And then I had all of these like huge mother ships and little ships, a lot of like spacecraft, very slowly kind of moving around the planet. But then around the planet, what I really noticed was there was this global hologram okay so shaped like a globe so just outside of the planet and the hologram was white but it was also translucent and it was flickering through readouts like like grids numbers readouts of the what's going on inside the earth it was like frequency readouts different locations it was like it was live it was live like um live time like happening now kind of thing. Um, and it was just like, really, really, it felt really important. Like it felt like that's something that, that is something that these, like, for instance, the, the councils that I talked to these, these motherships, it's, it felt like something that they could see, right? Like, and that maybe we've never seen, but they were able to read this and see this. Um, Okay. And it was, you know, a readout and information on the current state of Gaia. And the earth itself inside of that hologram was also flickering. Like it almost looked like a staticky channel where it would like flicker out and then come back in and then flicker out and then come back. It was like blinking in and out of existence. And it was such a clear vision. It was something that I was tuning into what is happening now. It was like in the now moment. And it, I realized like we think we know what reality is. And that's just a single vision that I had. I was like, oh my God, we have no idea what reality really is because we're plugged into it. It's like being at the center of a tornado where everything is like, it feels kind of calm in the center and it's all kind of swirling around you and you can't understand what you're looking at. But if you can zoom out from above the storm, you can see it. And so they could see our situation so much more clearly than we can being in it. We're too in it to understand. So then a message came through. And again, I was channeling the Pleiadian Council for Humanity. Now, I so the Council for Humanity is a branch of the Galactic Federation of Light. It's like a small council that works underneath that that umbrella of the GFL. I have seen many times that they're not the GFL. Now I'm talking about the council for humanity. I've seen many times that this smaller council has like a station on the moon. I know that sounds crazy, but I've seen it so many times that I've just now accepted the fact that the moon is this observation station and that there are a lot of different beings that use the vantage point of that. So anyway, yes, they have motherships as well, but like the moon is used quite often. Um, now lately, as in like the last, I want to say month, six weeks, maybe when I tune into the council for humanity, I'm primarily getting Pleiadians. Now that wasn't always the case. The council for humanity is a mixed uh, bag of beings. There's humans and there's Pleiadians and there's, I've seen Andromedans and Arcturians and, uh, tall whites, they kind of look like greys. I've seen mantis beings like I've seen like that this council is this multi-dimensional representation of almost like the Milky Way um, of like a lot of the beings on there. 
And yet I feel that the Pleiadians have been coming forward a lot more for me and a lot of people that I've been talking to. And so I do feel like the Pleiadians are in, in the last six weeks have had really close proximity to us. Okay. So if you've noticed them popping up for you a lot over the last six weeks or so, um, then that's just confirmation for you that that's happening for a lot of us. I didn't actually work with them a whole lot. I didn't really talk about them much. Like, I don't know where this is coming from. And all of a sudden I feel like they're always, when I go to channel and go to tune in after my sacred space, it's like, they're always the ones to meet me. So they're really in it with us right now. So that's really nice to kind of have that support. Okay. So then I, so this is the message that came through from the Pleiadians on the council for humanity. Okay. So these, that's just an explanation of who it is. Um, uh, another quick side note, you should always know wh what you're channeling. And if somebody's just channeling random messages and they don't know the source, that's not really a great uh, for clean channeling, you know who you're talking to and you have an intention set and you have a sacred space. So it's clean and ethical and there's no ego in there. Okay. So here's what came through and let's, let's dissect this. The first thing that they said was you are the calibrators. So they're talking to us humans. You are the calibrators, the engineers the uploads, your frequency upgrades the system. So we are the uploads, as in we have been inserted into what the vision I saw was, like into the earth, into that program simulation. I wasn't sure yet, but I knew that they were saying we've been uploaded into that system or uploaded into that program to calibrate. We are the calibrators, the engineers, and we do that through our awakening and through our frequency, right? The, the frequency of awakening is somebody that is self-aware, is somebody that can look around and be like, whoa, wait a minute. I am no longer on autopilot. I have questions. I, I'm, I have questions about my reality. That is friggin' huge. If we could just get like the majority, more than 50% of the population to just wake up off of autopilot. Wow, right? So that's, we are those calibrators. We are the engineers. We are the uploads i kind of loved that term your frequency upgrades the system it all is very like computer lingo which is just so weird because we're talking about reality and i was just like okay i was just receiving all of this and i just shared it their perspective and that's why i'm offering mine as well as we go through this okay the frequency your frequency upgrades the system awesome next point i think we got that so we'll move on then they said, you are capitals. You are. It's like, no question. You are in a simulation. <laughs> and then they said, that is fact. But to everyone inside, including you, it is real. So there you go. I mean, that's like a million questions answered right there. You are in a simulation. It's a fact. Okay. So we need to accept that. And we need to, and, and as we go through this, I'll talk about, it's not a negative thing. And I'll help you to see that this is not negative to think of yourself in a simulation. It is not, it is, it is an interesting way that reality just overlaps itself. That's all. Okay. So try to like, if you can drop your, your, what you've learned about what a simulation is through the matrix movie and all these other things as being something negative and set that aside for now. Cause it's not actually a negative thing. Um, but it is something that you can be uploaded into, or your consciousness can be uploaded into it, not you physically, your consciousness can be uploaded into it for particular reasons and purposes. And once you're uploaded into it, it becomes real for you. Okay. And remember earth is a school. So that's important that it be real for you. If you didn't buy into the realness you couldn't truly learn the lessons because you wouldn't be like, you just wouldn't, you wouldn't be believing it. You wouldn't be feeling it. You'd be like, yeah, well, but this is a simulation. So it doesn't really matter. And then you wouldn't commit and into this life and you wouldn't get those, those lessons and those gifts that are so important. Okay. All right. So next, the next message here is simulation earth is flickering. So that's the image I saw of the earth flickering inside that hologram simulation earth is flickering between the old program and a new lighter upgrade so we're in this weird in between that's the flicker okay so you can experience the flicker personally and we can experience the flicker on a larger collective scale so a larger collective scale is like um the mandela effects and glitches in the matrix it literally is glitching out because the old program is 
being replaced by this new lighter system. But there's that weird in-between period where one's being uploaded or installed or however you want to think about it. And the other one is being kind of pulled away. Um, with the retirement of the old program comes the retirement of many of its native bugs and viruses. So that's just speaking about dense and low energy, right? So as the old program, the 3D program of Earth starts to expire and it starts to get retired and it starts to get shelved and something new comes in. What's also getting shelved, thankfully, is some of the old bugs, right? The old bugs, the old parasites, the old viruses, the old limiting beliefs and the old programs. I really hope that the nine to five program gets shelved really soon because it is something that is really, really harmful um, to free spirits. And I also hope that the religious programming like gets shelved as well. And I think that that we are going to see those times happen in our lifetimes. We are going to see those get set to the side, retired, where most people are not buying into those anymore. Um, there are many system upgrades ahead of you. Okay, so this is just one. There's there's a lot to come. Even in our own lifetimes, we're going to see now that we're kind of on this roll. There are many system upgrades ahead of you. Some feel easy and larger upgrades require sacrifice, like pangs of birth to bring through pure life. So let's dig into that a little bit. Okay, um, so... Some of those upgrades are going to feel easy and breezy. And that is just the way that it is. You know, sometimes I feel like, oh, I've just quantum leaped and I'm having this new reality and it feels easy breezy and it feels kind of sudden. But really what it is, is you've been doing the work in the background, right? You've been doing the inner work. You've been doing the work on yourself. And all of a sudden the energy compounds into a quantum leap. It's not actually that it just came out of nowhere. Um, and the sacrifice required a lot of the time is it feels very personal. It feels like we're being asked to sacrifice our comfort zone. It feels like we're being asked to sacrifice our little comfortable box of beliefs and, and way of being that we're in, especially us on the leading edge of this awakening and on the leading edge of this um, system upgrade, basically, right? We are the ones that are being nudged so hard, sometimes nudged right off of the current path that you're on onto something else. And it's very uncomfortable and it can be very painful to lose your job, to, to have to realize that you're in the wrong relationship, to have to let go of friends, to deal with things like addiction, depression, anxiety, other illnesses and ailments that are, are, are like your burden to carry and your lesson to, to learn. And that does feel like sacrifice. Like all of the dark nights that I've been through, uh, were a necessary sacrifice, a dip into a black pit in order for me to rise higher. Maybe a better example would be like the tree with its roots. The deeper the roots go into the dark soil, the higher the tree branches on the top end can expand. A tree is always like a mirror of itself and it can only get as big as the roots can hold. And so like the deeper we go, and that's the sacrifice, the deeper we go into um, our own shadows, breaking ancestral patterns, the healing those deep, dark layers of ourselves, refusing to wear masks, embracing complete authenticity, vulnerability, being ourself, learning how to stop caring what other people think. Like there's so much work that we have done. And that's that sacrifice that feels so uncomfortable, right? But on the other side of that is is the larger upgrade. Now, why would that be? Okay, if we think, if we're talking about this like a computer program, why would that be? Because we have, if we are the calibrators, then, and our frequency is leading this upgrade, then we have to learn how to let go of our own dense low frequencies so that we can hold more light so that we can raise our own frequency we're the pioneers of that right so we go first so we have to get uncomfortable we have to make these sacrifices to let go of that density to clear it out to 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 get it out of our bodies and that is when we can then bring in that higher frequency and that more light which is a a, a, a pang what does it say? Like pangs of birth to bring through pure life. 
right? You bring more of your soul into your body every time you clear out density. You bring in that pure life. You bring in more of your consciousness, more of your soul. When you bring that here into this simulation, it makes waves. It's so powerful. And that's really what we've been doing, clearing out the old crap and the old lower frequencies and the programming and some of it just from being here, you know, from childhood till now, but other layers of the soul can be parallel and past lifetimes that we're working on clearing or ancestral patterns and genes. It's a lot, right? But all of that work is for this beautiful higher goal of this huge upgrade to the system. And each one of us is like the little calibrators of that. Okay. Um, hopefully that makes sense. I'll move on. And then this, the Pleiadian said after that, we watch, we watch from the outer rim of that hologram of the planet, for we do not have passage or plugins to your world, which they put in quotations. I was like, all right, like they're really driving at home. I literally saw them do that, but we are supporting you. So we watch from the outer rim for we do not have passage or plugins to your world, but we are supporting you. Many of you reading this are plugged in, in consciousness alone, but we have you. Your true form is safe and nurtured in a classified location. Like, this was one of those moments when I was like, how can I not this email needed to be so much longer. How can I not describe what that means and just send this out to people? And, and I just did though. Um, so think about that. How I view that is like my true form, which I have many true forms, right? If I'm in a, if I'm in a higher form with the Pleiadians, it could be sixth or seventh dimensional physical still form of me probably in some secure confidential room that they have where I'm like meditating or in some kind of a trance or in some kind of a like plug-in chair or something kind of similar to the matrix idea, but positive. Okay. Plugged in where my consciousness is now plugged in and it gets sent here. And then I wake up here and think this is real, right? And that could be at the level of the Pleiadians, but you could even think of this as you're you're an ascended master sitting like the Buddha, like cross-legged in the 11th dimension right now, sending your, con and, and many of us are, right? Uh, plugging in our consciousness to this reality, then when we go to sleep up there, we wake up here. And we go, oh, shit, okay, this is real, amazing, let's do this. And then when we go to sleep here, we wake up there. And it's this crazy dual experience of existence. Well, I mean, we are multidimensional, but it's just so big. Like, that's why it's like, whoa, like reality is a little fragmented in that in that way, but it's so beautiful. It's like you can be in so many places at once and, and we are living. Think about how we know we're living on parallel timelines. How many? Like there could be so many. It's kind of the same idea right? Where we're this oversoul and we're plugging in our consciousness to this reality, this one, this one, this one, but we're this oversoul in the ascended realm, just like, um, like meditating and sending pieces of our consciousness. Through. That's what God is too. Like, whoa, like we could just keep going up with this, but I just love the way that they made this feel so tangible and so real. Like, um, you're plugged in in consciousness alone. We have you. It was like such a beautiful sentence. Your true form is safe. We have you. We got you, babe. Don't worry. You are nurtured. Your true form is safe and nurtured in a classified location. Like we, it's protected. Don't worry. You're not going to lose that connection between this conscious version of you and, and, and your true form. And I think we have more than one true form. So I just like that. It just really was like, again, this is a reality bending experience to even just read this download from them. Okay. Let's move on. Cause like that could be a whole video, just that little section. Um, when the body rests, you are able to unplug and join us. Exactly. At all times we work endlessly to restore you. Okay, that means that they're endlessly working to restore us on both ends, right? The true form with them, maybe in the Pleiades or in these in these motherships or, or, or maybe some, you know, hidden and safe planet, wherever your true form is, or maybe some just alternate dimension. 
And then, but then also this part of your consciousness is really important. And the avatar that you're in matters too. It's a gift, right? So the way that they said at all times, we work endlessly to restore you. Like they are, they are on their end doing like energy work and, and, and refueling us and activating us and keeping our frequency clean. And, and then here they're trying so hard to help us as well, as much as they can come through. Um, Okay. And then they said, um, at all times, we work endlessly to restore you. You are not alone. And we truly are not. Some of you will hear these words and know they are truth. Others will fight against the idea of a simulation. But simulation does not mean a cold, soulless, AI-powered non-reality. That is not what a simulation is in their eyes or, or in in these other galactic beings eyes it's not cold it's not soulless it's not ai powered it's not a non-reality and then they said gaia mother earth is real and warm and a sentient being and her levels of creation are real and organic so gaia has many levels of reality as we know well, we only know of a couple. We only know of 3D, 4D, 5D, 6, right? Somewhere in there. But there might be lower, there might be higher. And then there's parallel versions of all those as well. Gaia is hosting many layers of reality already on one planet. That's a lot for her, right? But each one of those realities, and I have experienced, like, I feel like I've gotten even lower than than 3D in some of my worst moments of my life where you're just, oh, the worst dark nights. And I've been in this blissful 60 place too, feeling so empowered. And so I know that each, 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 each one of those layers that I've lived in those realities and those creation layers of creation that they called it, I know that they're real and that they still are organic. Like there's, there's plant life, there's, you know, the physical form there's the nature kingdom there's the animal kingdom it's all warm there's the sun and the sky it's all real okay it's all real in these layers of creation that she has okay her levels of creation are real and organic not ai if you could try to blend what you know of a physical organic planet that reality with the idea that each one of its realities or layers are like levels right like a video game almost like the planet is real it is warm it is sentient it is that physical organic planet but the idea that each one of her levels of reality are like versions of her of Gaia versions hosted by Gaia's mainframe consciousness so Gaia is able to hold multiple layers of reality because she is this very ancient soul, right? Very, very ancient, beautiful soul. Um, I mean, what more can I add to that? It's like, try to blend what you think of a physical organic planet, that kind of a reality with the idea that each one of those reality levels are versions hosted by Gaia's mainframe of consciousness. So a simulation now becomes just a layer it's not AI, it's not cold, it's not soulless, it's the opposite. It's this very real place, but because they're stacked on top of each other, it's like a layered, and it has to be organized, and it has to be careful with its boundaries, and you get, you know, inserted your consciousness into one, and you can work your way up through them, and you'll see the glitches going as you go through, like she's hosting them, on she has a mainframe consciousness that is a real nature kingdom world that's what her mainframe looks like and then she hosts these layers of reality on that so it's an interesting blend of what we think a simulation to be and then the beauty of Gaia okay as you travel oh wait you can move up or down through these layers of Gaia reality by uploading your consciousness to them okay which involves a ladder of frequency that you travel on Makes perfect sense, right? I've traveled that ladder of frequency up and I've gone back down and we all have ups and downs. And basically you're moving up and down through the layers of Gaia's reality. Her different simulations, they're all different. They're all these different layers of reality with different rules and different frequencies and different like themes. And you can move up and down through them seamlessly pretty much 
as your as your frequency goes up and down. That's the ladder of frequency. It's just your your state, your main frequency state, state of being, whatever you want to call that. Like what's your neutral? Um, so basically, like if your neutral is 500, your resting place is this 500 hertz frequency, this love frequency. You're going to be in the 5D reality and above. And if your neutral is neutral, like 400 or whatever, then you'll be around the 4D. And then below that, the 3D is where we get into like, you know, competition, jealousy, anxiety, depression, shame is the lowest frequency that anyone can feel. So I kind of feel like there is a below the 3D. Um, Okay. So you move up and down through the layers of Gaia by uploading your consciousness to any one of them and then traveling a, a ladder of frequency up or down. So now you have full access once you get uploaded in. So most of us get uploaded into the 3D, right? Um, although babies, are they 3D? They kind of feel like this magical being that is so much higher than that. So, I mean, and because I know that babies can like see spirit and hear angels. So I just want to say like babies are the 5D already. And they're such a light frequency. It's beautiful. And what brings them down is their parentage, like their the way that they're raised, the society, the programs, it seeps in and they slowly start to come down, right? Which is sad, but it's the point of, of earth. So we understand it. Okay. Um, as you travel higher into the layers up that ladder of Gaia's realities, more and more of your consciousness is able to join you, right? More and more of your soul and your consciousness can come into that. So that also could be one of the goals for raising your frequency to just have more of your true self join you in this form, join you here in this particular timeline. Um, and even though it's only a piece of your consciousness that is currently uploaded, it is enough to make it all real. And it is, we've seen that for sure. We all forget a lot of the time, right? We, everyone gets sucked back into the simulation and then you remember again, it's like you kind of fall back into autopilot and you're like, God, and you're complaining about something like, Oh, this, damn it. I, you know, this thing didn't work out in my favor. And then you like have this awakening moment where you're like, wait a minute. I'm creating this reality. Wait a minute. Everything's happening for me, not to me. It's like totally normal to be like a little up and down like that. So don't worry. Okay. As your free. Oh, this is good. Okay. As your frequency outgrows the level that you're on. So say you're in 3D and your frequency starts to outgrow 3D. More and more of your consciousness tries to join you in the level that you're on and you experience glitches the flickering. So they call it the flickering. And we on earth here call it glitches. I kind of like the flickering. I just think that's the coolest thing ever. Um, in fact, I've just decided that's probably going to be somewhere in the title of this video, the flickering mainframe of Gaia. Oh, she's good. That's fire. Okay. Um, so as your frequency outgrows the level of reality that you're on, even if you're in 5d and you start to ooh like outgrow that, more of your consciousness just tries to join you. And that's what creates the flickering. And that current level of reality that you're on, you've currently evolved beyond it. And that's why it starts to flicker. And you're being asked to step into a higher, to climb the ladder again. But a lot of the time, climbing the ladder requires the sacrifice that we were talking about. And a lot of people just kind of sink back down because it feels too much. They're like, oh, I got a taste of it. It's too much. And it's so important to just keep going because on the other side of the initiation phase, which is kind of like climbing up that ladder and having that little mini, oh shit, this is hard. It doesn't feel like my, my comfort zone anymore. Now I don't feel like the big fish in a little pond. I feel like the, the little fish in a big pond and I'm scared and I don't feel as special or important. It's like people backtrack and it's important to keep going because, because when you get through that little initiation bump in the road on the way up that ladder, it gets so, so good, right? It gets so good. Um, okay. These glitches are always a sign or the flickering is always a sign that you're about to upload more of your consciousness into a higher level of Gaia. So Gaia has a main frame that holds all of these different levels of reality simulations, and we move an up and down through them. And these flickerings or glitches are a sign that more of your consciousness keeps trying to join you because you're ready. 
but it's it's burning out the circuits. It's like it's 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 a hologram actually, but it's like flickering the hologram around you and making reality weird and making weird symptoms happening. There's there's quite a few symptoms of the flickering, like the purge when you start purging from your life, all the things that no longer support the higher version of you trying to come in. That's probably the most painful one. That's probably the one that people would complain about the most, right? The purge. So that's where like you know you're you're doing this, whoo, going up up up, and everything that doesn't support that level of reality it, it's trying to pull you down right and if it if you let it it will and you have to cut the cords so that you can continue to rise cutting the cords on relationships friendships jobs habits like certain ways of being food whatever it is that you need to let go of alcohol whatever's holding you back it's different for everybody and it's different at every phase so it's personal but that's totally an initiation and that's totally like birth pangs like they were talking about earlier in the video um the sacrifice for you to rise there's always a sacrifice or an initiation it's not a bad thing okay so these glitches or the flickering is always a sign that you're about to upload more of your consciousness into a higher level of gaia simulation is not a negative connotation it is a beautiful way to experience realities that are tucked away inside the mainframe consciousness of mega beings and creators like gaia okay so gaia is a mega being that's why she's a planet that's why she's so huge she is a mega being she is a huge ancient creator so she has realities tucked Inside of her mainframe consciousness, she's able to hold more than one reality. Now, are there planets and stars and realms where maybe it's just a singular reality? Totally. Are there ones that have way more than what Gaia holds? Totally. Right? It's just so cool. And these simulation realities are timeline layers or reality layers tucked into one, one being's consciousness, which which is also really interesting if you think about the fact that we're living inside someone else's consciousness, right? So Gaia's mainframe consciousness is what's hosting the levels of reality, and we're being inserted into that. Now, you can leave and do other things, but for now, that's what Earth is. Earth is inside of another being's consciousness, that's also a bit of a reality mind bender too, right? I feel like there's, you can make a video on so many of these concepts and just expand on them. But it's so cool because the consciousness of source is what we all live in. We live within that consciousness. And that consciousness is the only reason that life exists in the first place. Without consciousness, there's nothing. There has to be consciousness, awareness, something there that knows and it is aware of itself that source consciousness is the whole universe multiverse everything but then there's smaller pockets of consciousness of these mega beings that create alternate realities smaller little schools things to learn from and when you come out of that and you're not inside a dimensional reality of some other kind of mega being when you're just in the plain source consciousness i would say that that's like when you are in between lifetimes right because a lifetime or an incarnation is inside of a dimension outside of all dimensions is when we are just the pure soul that means we're not inside of an avatar right so even in the angelic realms where people think you're the pure soul you are not the angelic realms you are inserted in like exactly just like with Gaia, but different because it's higher. You're inserted in as the soul consciousness, but a lot more of your soul, almost all of you could probably go into an angelic lifetime because it's so high vibe. And, and you have a form that you take on like an avatar. You're not just the pure soul. Angels have light bodies. They have light forms. They have forms that they take on like an avatar that expire, right? Like just like a human has a lifetime from here to here, start point and an end point and your your soul takes on a physical avatar and then when it the soul leaves the avatar just decomposes um there's an expiration date on it it's the same in the angelic realms even though that's hard to understand they still have a start and an end date to their lifetimes that it's still an incarnation it might be thousands and thousands of years millions of years but there still is a start and an end meaning that you can always 
that it's a good thing because it means that you're not stuck in that. Like, oh, I decided I'm going to be, I don't know, an archangel of healing, a beautiful divine feminine archangel of healing named Sarah. Okay. And in I go. And now I'm Sarah for this huge chunk of time, maybe. And then at the end point, my soul leaves. And just like all souls, we go to the in-between place, which is just that go- that source consciousness. That's where all souls go. You should watch my video, Divine Death. I'll try to remember to link that up. That's where all souls go after an incarnation where they're playing a role, playing an avatar. Now they're just the pure soul. And now they're talking about, okay, let's do my life review. Okay, let's create new soul contracts and think about where I want to incarnate next. Okay, what did I learn from that lifetime? Okay, that was cool or that was hard or whatever. Let's talk about it. Let's learn from it before we jump back in. And when we jump back in, do we want to be a little more physical, meaning a little of a lower frequency or dimension, like a little more dense? Maybe next time I'll be an Arcturian. Still pretty high vibe, right? But definitely lower than an angel, more physical. So souls kind of like slowly descend down into these. I mean, Earth is so advanced, you guys. Like to even be here at all is so advanced. Um, Anyway, so I hope that that makes sense. That I don't really remember why I started talking about the soul leaving a lifetime. Trying to look at my notes and see where that came from so I can wrap this up to make sense. but basically earth is a school and you know all all in oh i remember why now because i was talking about how source consciousness is its own reality it's that in between it's a heaven people call it right that's where you are the pure soul you're not playing a role you remember everything too you remember all of your lifetimes everything and you feel you feel the most like yourself You don't lose yourself. You feel the most like yourself because you're not playing one character. But every time you enter into a lifetime slash incarnation, that's the same thing. All of a sudden, you're playing with an avatar and a character and a name to learn, to learn lessons, to heal back to oneness, to balance out karma, to help people. There's lots of reasons why you would go into an incarnation. There's lots of reasons why we're here in Gaia. So I hope that this was like, I'm sure it was interesting, but I hope that it was clear and that it was, I didn't make it more complicated. And again, make sure that you are on, make sure that you are on my email list for these kinds of, of downloads. Cause this one was so huge and I really wanted to break it down for you guys. I mean, there, I have some real favorite moments in this, um, in this email. And I just want to say one of my favorite moments is when they said, um, Many of you reading this in consciousness alone, many of you reading this are plugged in, in consciousness alone, but we have you. Your true form is safe and nurtured in a classified location. When the body rests, you are able to unplug and join us. And at all times, we work endlessly to restore you. You are not alone. I just, that whole chunk is just like such a beautiful mind bending truth, right? I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I hope that what you can take from this is that simulation is not negative, soulless, cold, inorganic, or AI. That's not what it is. It's that mega beings like Gaia have such a huge consciousness that they can create levels because her consciousness is so huge and so big. She is a creator being that inside of her consciousness, which we can also call the mainframe, there are, she's able to hold like different levels of reality. And each one of those is this simulation that the soul can choose to incarnate into just like a dimension. So super cool. Okay, you guys, thank you so much. Please remember to like, share, comment, all the good stuff. I will be talking to you soon through email. If you're on the list, join or follow me on Instagram for more. I have so much coming for in Starseed Academy over the next few months um, to prepare people for 2024. So just make sure that you're following me in all ways. And I love you all so much. And oh yeah, before we go, please remember, listen to your heart and the quiet voice within because you are so much than the body you are in. I love you, beautiful souls. Thank you so much. Bye.